I think it's, uh, I just uh, sort of remember that I was recently talking to uh, a physician uh, and one of his, uh, he said that one of his patients was complaining about loss of sort of mental focus and this sort of almost like blurred vision, blurred uh, sort of blurriness in the, in, in the mental sort of uh, capacity. And uh, then the physician put him on a ketogenic diet for about three months. And the patient came back to say that uh, he feels so much better, he's able to focus, etc. But I think if you look at it from a scientific perspective, was it that now he cut out all the additives and the, the preservatives in food-like substances? Obviously, he's no longer eating those, he's eating natural foods. Was it the cutting out of carbohydrates? Uh, <laughs> or was it actually improving his uh, digestive system that also had that imp impact on the brain or was it the other way around as you would say it's interesting <laughs> yeah i think uh, the, the ketogenic and and uh, even the the ca carnivore uh, diet uh, these are very good elimination diets yes. so you can you can starve uh, specific microbes if you have uh, overgrowth of uh, so-called uh, non not beneficial microbes, the then uh, one of the best ways is to starve them, and then uh, limiting the the availability of uh, of glucose is one of the the best ways to to starve uh, these microbes because all uh, both uh, uh, pathogenic or opportunistic pathogen uh, fungi and bacteria uh, love to gorge on, on glucose. So when you have uh, uh, especially uh, quick deliveries of uh, simple glucose uh, into, the, into the small intestines, uh, these guys have a first uh, take on, on what's uh, coming in. And, uh, and they love to gorge and then uh, they can suppress other more beneficial. Uh, I don't really like this beneficial or, or harmful uh, point of bacteria because, for example, the E. coli, uh, a typical uh, commensal of, of the human microbiome, uh, you can have very different strains or even the same strain can behave differently in different uh, contexts. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the problem with the microbiome research, that it's really the, the function, how it works and, uh, and what niche it uh, goes into that, that really matters and not, uh, not a specific uh, species or 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 uh, or genus or whatever of uh, of bacteria. You can say that oh, bifidobacteria are good. Uh, it, it doesn't mean anything to me. It's it's. Uh, I think it's just nonsense. Or 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 E. coli is is bad. No, we we know even uh, probiotic strains of of E. coli. It's it's not it's not absolutely not simple. And that's that's the, the simplification which I find uh, dangerous in in microbiome research. That everybody tries to jump on that. Uh, let's eat this and that fermented foods, and then uh, let's let's uh, take these uh, uh, probiotics because it's full of uh, uh, lactobacilli and, and full of uh, bifidobacteria, and, and these are inherently good. No, that's that's not the case. Uh, uh, the, the recent study showed, for example, that that uh, ketones when uh, you uh, are on a ketogenic diet uh, where you have high blood uh, ketones these specifically inhibit the growth of bifidobacteria so th th then ketones do uh, enormous damage mm. for sure no absolutely not it's 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 just a different context so it seems that when you are on a, on a ketogenic diet on when you are uh, you are uh, doing a extended fast for example uh you don't need the bifidobacteria then, then the bifidobacteria would send signals which are inappropriate so the body tells them okay guys uh, pull back a little bit because uh, there is a different context and the, and uh, the immune system uh actively regulates uh, the composition of the of the microbiota so we to 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 enforce high Bifidobacteria without uh, considering context is just uh, stupid because it's, it's biology is always uh, very strongly contextual. So I, my, usually my first question is when, when somebody claims something, okay, in what context? <laughs> yeah, you did mention the uh, the carnivore diet. 
um, yeah. people swear by it these days. Um, some people do it for years uh, and intend to do it for the rest of their life. But one of the, one of the probably most commonly asked questions about the carnivore diet is how do like meat-based foods feed the bacteria because we know that the bacteria need fiber. Um, so how, how do you feed your gut bacteria? They're there to live with you. They're part of you. How do you feed them if you are only eating meat and yet people remain healthy on a meat-based diet? So how, how does that work? Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's when you have import, important observations. And then uh, you, uh, I mean, not you, I'm, I'm generalizing uh, here. Uh, then you try to pull some some smart things because because we know that it, this is true, this is fact. So we have to generalize, and this has to be uh, true in this context as well. Well, uh, partly I think it's it's right because the bacteria has to be fed on something. But uh, we have to ask uh, some important questions. What is fiber in the first place? What what is fiber? Uh, what if we define fiber as a feed for bacteria? And then uh, bacteria can feed on uh, animal uh, molecules, uh, animal source molecules, such as uh, chondroitin, for example, or, or collagen. These are very established uh, food, so feed sources for, for bacteria. It's, it's a little known fact that uh, some old studies when when uh, not not very old because it's about the microbiome, so it's not old uh, in terms of uh, microbiota research. Um, some researchers looked at uh, the, the microbiome of uh, carnivores, like the cheetah and, and these uh, animals, and they found out that uh, uh, they they tend to eat most of the prey. So uh, when when uh, smaller carnivores, for example, uh, a cat. Uh, catch catches a mouse it eats the whole mouse usually or just uh, leaves the, the head or something which is really not uh, digestible so there is the fur going in all connective tissues going in and, and all bones small bones everything is going in and uh, curiously enough uh, these uh, can uh, act as a, as a fibers so the microbiota of a, of a carnivore can synthesize uh, these uh, short chain fatty acids uh, from these animal uh, compounds. So when you eat whole small fish, for example, or you eat connective tissues, especially um, cartilage or, or uh, other connective skin uh, and the subcutaneous uh, tissues, uh, many indigenous people highly regard, for example, the, the intestines. And, 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 and then uh, the, the, the herbivores or vegetarians or vegans or whatever we call them come along and, and claim that ah, that's because uh, the fiber uh, and, the, and the good bacteria are in the, in the intestines. Uh, I'm not sure the, 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 the intestine is a huge amount of uh, connective tissues. And you, you have all this mucus, for example. And then uh, this is uh, another part of the answer to your question that uh, mucus is uh, partly uh, synthesized and released by epithelial cells of, of, of the, the intestines so that uh, they feed the bacteria. And the composition of uh, mucus uh, has a huge impact on, on, on uh, what bacteria can adhere and, and feed off uh, the, the mucus. And of course, it's, it's a problem when you have a dysbiosis, so you have a unfavorable composition of bacteria and they have nothing to eat, just this mucus. And then they can eat more uh, quickly than uh, how you produce it. And then uh, your intestinal layer, the protection becomes too thin. But I think that's, that's one context when you have already a uh, poor composition of bacteria and then uh, your diet is void of uh, dietary fiber. This is not necessarily the case when you don't have the, the unfavorable composition of bacteria. Uh, so you can produce uh, ample amounts of uh, this mucus to feed uh, the bacteria. What do you think happens when you fast for, for days or, or some people for weeks? Everybody says it's healthy. 
how can it be healthy without dietary fiber? <laughs> it's it's nonsense. It's a different context. So we, we should be looking at uh, what happens in that context to explain how it works and why it is not uh, the, this uh, det detrimental what uh, most researchers tend to think about it. So I think that there are there are no important questions asked. It's it's, it's partly po political, you know, that we are heading towards this uh, climate disaster catastrophe where meat has to be excluded from the diet, and then they try to find uh, a lot of uh, funding goes into research, which tries to identify uh, harmful compounds in, in animal foods uh, that uh, that cause uh, this disease or that disease or contribute to this uh, disease. I think it's a bit more complex uh, because when you I just posted very recently that uh, uh, what happens on an animal-based diet and they find uh, various compounds uh, that are increased and then the animal-based diet is basically a McDonald's uh, menu. Uh, is that an animal-based diet when you eat uh, buns or, or covering your meat and then you have your fries and then you have your coke and, and, and everything? And then, of course, you have uh, perhaps two uh, burger patties uh, in the middle. But is that an animal-based diet, really, or 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 it's or it's not? I wouldn't say it's an animal-based diet because, uh, evolu from an evolutionary perspective, if I go out uh, for hunting, then I uh, I don't know I we, we as a team uh, hunt down a whatever a deer. Or, or, or a large animal, because that's that's been uh, characteristic of human hunters uh, for uh, hundreds of thousands of years. Uh, and we hunt down a deer, and then we eat the deer, and we may eat a uh, few berries, which the women uh, gathered during the day uh, as, as dessert. But uh, is, that, that's an animal-based diet, because uh, the, the huge, the, the big majority of your calories or, or, or the, the volume of the food is uh, comes from uh, the animal, but uh, a McDonald's menu is not an animal-based diet. It's just uh, stupidity, and uh, pinpointing any one component from complex uh, meals or meal patterns uh, is just uh, enormously stupid. And uh, most of this research comes from uh, this uh, nutritional epidemiology of uh, of uh, food frequency questionnaires. Mm -hmm. where they ask people a uh, hundred of questions about what what did you eat yesterday and and how much of this you ate yesterday and and uh, the, the last week and last month the year before and these kind of questions i cannot really tell what i had last week not to mention last month it's it's it's, it's very stupid on average, how much meat, how much red meat do you eat uh, uh, per month? <laughs> yeah, I eat red meat on a regular basis, but it makes a lot of difference if I if I eat out in uh, fast food restaurants uh, five times a week, or if I uh, uh, buy uh, organic beef and, and uh, cook it myself and maybe add some vegetables and, and eat some berries uh, as, as dessert. It's a, it is a, that's an enormous difference and they start try to uh what is it called in english wish wash it uh, t together uh so that it's uh it's, it, it looks like the same but it's absolutely not the same it's a mm -hmm. hugely different context mm -hmm. and we know this kind of studies should be discredited straight away um, i mean there was a recent um ridiculous study on diabetes and the possible causes and people claimed that they were eating meat but of course they were eating burgers and high levels of carbohydrate and white bread and uh, and uh, a small portion of maybe uh, ground beef in a big sort of pastry in a pie. And, uh, and then they said, oh, meat seems to be the cause of diabetes uh, or type 2 diabetes. Uh, it's, <laughs> you know, and people yeah. actually did claim that they were having coke with it too but all of that was disregarded and i thought how more how much more ridiculous can you know scientific or yeah. supposedly scientific study get but people believe because especially when these things are reported in the media people read the headline which in most cases is manipulated and they believe that there is scientific truth in those studies 
Yeah, uh, I think that in fact there is a lot of, lot of religion. So that's why I, I uh, caution people um, who follow um, healthier diets, but not, not to fall into the, the religious part of, of these uh, diets, because it, it kind of uh, occurs also in the low carb and carnivore uh, yeah. groups as well. So some people, yeah, but I think this is a uh, how we are humans we we tend to follow uh, leaders of opinion leaders uh, all the time and not question anything then uh, if he's right in in one uh, important uh, thing then uh, he must be right in in uh, everything but that's that's not really the case so i caution that uh, uh, have a look at uh, all these studies and if there are some mechanisms uh, in that specific context i cannot exclude for example that adding more red meat on top of all these uh, stuff we eat like uh, refined flour and refined sugar and, uh, and uh, sugary beverages and these kind of things it makes it worse mm. i think it's 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 plausible because there are some mechanisms but but in pointing uh, the red meat as, as the very basic uh, uh, root cause of all the maladies is, i think is just uh, laughable because it doesn't make it uh, the root cause. It's, it, it may be a con contributor, a specific uh, minor contributor in that context. But uh, in other contexts, it's, it's not a problem at all. Uh, coming back to the microbiota, for example, it was shown that when we eat a very meat heavy diet, our microbiome uh, develops uh, those, those uh, microbes that can process uh, the, the glycans uh, specifically present in red meat, especially in, for example, pork. Uh, and then there, there is this uh, NOI 5GC or whatever it's called. It's a special uh, glycan. You know, glycans are these sugar, short sugar chains attached to proteins. And uh, these are very highly uh, immunogenic. So the immune system recognizes these uh, glycans on, on top of uh, proteins and and then uh, it can provoke uh, strong immune responses and uh, some of these are really foreign to the human body for example some of these glycans in in uh, pork and uh, we cannot uh, digest it we cannot really modify it and it, if it enters in large amounts uh, into the, the bloodstream then it provokes uh, strong immune responses and then uh, scientists say that oh these immune responses contribute to different diseases okay but it, it 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 is again context dependent if you are if you are really on a meat heavy diet and your microbiota is adapted to this diet so you don't uh, um, um, change the the food items daily that uh, okay i have a meat for for uh, lunch and then i have a huge cake uh, for for dinner and so on and so forth then your micro microbiome can adapt to a specific and, and consistent, more consistent diet. And uh, they can deal with these uh, weird sugar chains coming from, from some uh, animal foods. And then uh, it, was, it, it was clearly shown in, in now several studies that uh, when you are on a meat heavy diet, your microbe adapts and you are exposed to low amounts of uh, these problematic uh, compounds. You did mention um, so animal uh based diet and how ancestrally um, uh, so, so we would have eaten almost every part of the animal we wouldn't have wasted oh that's you know not fit for human consumption if we hunted we'd feast on almost every part of the animal but I don't need, we don't need to go that far back I remember 60 years ago probably 50 years ago my grandmother uh, would cook liver and fat wasn't separated from red meat for example that's another big uh, 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 um, element that we've lost in our modern society uh, fat is taken out of uh, you know uh, uh, of meat so my grandmother would have we, we would have she would cook I wouldn't have but she would cook a heart and all the organs of the animal even the intestines used to be she, she'd stuff the intestines with some vegetables and meat the animal intestines these were consumed um you know by even our grandparents so we don't need to go too far back in our history 
And then somehow we lost touch with where our food comes from. And we started picking and choosing and we eat that part of the animal, the rest goes to waste. Um, when, when and how did we go wrong? Yeah, some, sometimes I, I, I think about that uh, these days our dogs are the happiest uh, creatures on earth because what uh, humans picked uh, just a couple of decades ago as, as prime uh, food items now goes to dog food. And uh, dogs used to get the lean meat uh, cuts, for example, uh, when uh, humans ha had an animal, they, they got the remaining lean meat, uh, which, is, which was uh, considered, uh, okay, it's not really good for anything, but it's still good for the dog. And now we go after the, the lean meat cuts as, as it was uh, something very special. Um, I think it's, it's a little bit weird, but uh, dogs are certainly made happy uh, by, by these uh, developments. <laughs>